presentation every Uh, what I'd like to do is we're going to kick off the um, presentation by the various civic associations soon. I'm going to announce everybody from the civic associations out of here. But we do like uh, at every meeting to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. So I'm going to ask anybody that's tuning in to please join us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. The Republic. The Republic. Which stands. Stands. One nation. One nation. Under God. Under God. Indivisible. With liberty and, and justice, justice for all. I found Sarah. What's that? I found Sarah. Okay, Sarah's on. Hi there. Thank you. I couldn't find the uh, I couldn't find the link, but thanks for letting me in. <laughs> You're welcome. And we have um, the public is mm -hmm. in. The public is in. We have 46 in attendance. 46 people in attendance from the public, and I'm sure um, some will be joining us shortly. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going, going to announce the representatives from the various local civic associations, and then I'm going to pass it on to them to make a presentation of tonight with a reference to a uh, big house or big home movement, uh, which uh, everybody's aware of. It's not just a South Pole issue. It's an issue of... Uh, throughout, uh, certainly throughout the Northeast and probably elsewhere. Anyway, from the, I'm going to do this East to West. Uh, from the uh, Orient Association, we have Duran uh, Benner, Barbara Friedman, and Mark Reisenfeld. From East Marion, we have Ann Murray, who's director of the MCA. Uh, New Suffolk and Kutra were a push in terms of which one was more East. So I'm going to say George Cork Moore, representing the New Suffolk Civic Association. And then Barbara Best representing the Cutjaw Civic Association, and then John Carter representing the Mattapuck Plural Civic Association. Hello. Folks, we're having technical difficulties. Okay. So, okay, everybody can hear me now? I, I hope everybody heard me a minute ago. Okay, with, with that, I'm going to uh, pass, uh, pass it off to you for their presentation. Oh, also, I want the public to know that uh, all questions will be taken after the presentation, and we're going to ask you to use the raise hand uh, function on your screen. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to have the present. we're going to go through the presentation first. So we're going to ask everybody to please hold up on questions. With that, take it away. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, town board members and Supervisor Russell for inviting the South Old Town Civic Associations to share our thoughts on the urgency facing South Old Town to place reasonable limits on the size of houses in our community. My name's Drianne Benner from the Orient Association, and I'm here with my colleagues from the other civic associations and our technical team, uh, architect and South Old resident, Barbara Friedman, and planner and South Old resident, Mark Reisenfeld. We're here tonight to propose zoning code changes to limit house size in the town of South Old before it is too late. Missy, mm -hmm. could you bring up the slideshow, please? Yes, I just realized it didn't go back to the beginning. Hold on one moment. Hold on, I lost my. <sighs> I'm trying to get my connection down on the bottom. That's the room. No, you should my screen on over Yeah. You should be able to share your panel on the bottom. No. Sorry, guys. Come on.
Great, thank you, Missy. So if you could. Great. Please go to the next slide. So as I mentioned, we're here tonight to propose zoning code changes to limit house size in the town of Southold before it's too late. As you can see here with this house, that 62,000 square feet, that's the main house, the total number of buildings amounts to about 110,000 square feet. This is an example of what can happen when house size regulations allow for very large houses to be built. And if this happens, this will change the small town nature of Southold Town forever. The presentation is broken down into five parts. John Carter is going to tell us about what brought us here, what brought the Civics Association here. It'll be followed by George, who's going to be reviewing the current code that we have in Southold Town, followed by Anne, who's going to talk about when big is too big and a sense of proportion and how you gauge when big is too big. Then I will discuss our recommendation, which is a general recommendation for your consideration. And then Barbara will end with our next steps. Next, so John. Thank you. The comprehensive plan. Uh, the comprehensive plan is grounded in a vision that preserves our community character. This single statement frames the discussion tonight as we consider the challenges of making this vision a reality. How do you get from here to there? What does land preservation, a vibrant economy, and a diverse housing stock and protected natural resources look like and feel like in the changing landscape in South Old Town? Our goal tonight is to see how zoning code changes for limiting house size can have a positive impact now and in the future. Uh, next slide, please. Our purpose. As you know, we represent the South Old Town, the South Old Town's civic associations. And as a result, we are representative of a cross section of folks across all the hamlets. While we did not represent everyone, uh, our member meetings and our public meetings continue to reveal that placing additional limits on house size and developmental pressure in general are common and urgent concerns. And we appreciate the town board inviting us to a work session a few months ago and the commitment then that you made to invite us back and include the public. Our goal is to inform the public on current regulations and to share with the public and the town board proposed changes for limiting house size. We believe there is an urgent need for action and decisions. For your consideration, we propose setting a sub September 2021 date for adopting zone code amendments. Your consideration of our proposal as a starting point for a code committee, we believe is <laughs> a great start. Next, please. So why change the code? Changing the code provisions that govern house size will help the town meet goals stated in Southold's new comprehensive plan. These include preserving community character, supporting a balance of economic development and property rights, protecting scenic views, cohesiveness of neighborhoods, and of course, the critical need to protect and sustain our natural resources. Chapter three, land use and zoning of the comp plan on page 12, specifically states the need to review zoning for residential districts, including lot coverage and referencing changing lot coverage percentages, setbacks, and the impact of the current code on neighboring homes. One of the most pressing issues we have heard from community members is the need to stop large houses from dwarfing or visually overwhelming neighboring homes and neighborhoods. We have come to understand the complexity <clears throat> of this issue through hours of research and discussion with our plan, with our group and other experts, as well as regular conversations with Supervisor Russell, as we have planned for tonight. We appreciate the time he has taken to help prepare us for this meeting. We know there is this is no small task and we feel that taking the first step tonight helps the community remember the importance of working with our town government to effect positive change. Next slide, please. And here, George, if you would please, tell us how the current code allows for big houses. 
I don't, I really can't do that. I don't know enough about that. I, I just want to take a minute and, and talk about small town feel uh, with regard to uh, large house size. You know, we all live in a beautiful place and, you know, it's a beautiful place that's changing quickly. And it seems that the rate of change seems to be increasing. You know, the, the North Fork looks different from the rest of Long Island. It's got larger views. It seems calmer. The neighborhoods have a particular small town feel. I mean, for example, I think it was uh, more than 10 years ago in the L NWRP, um, New Suffolk, New Suffolk Road was uh, a candidate for being um, uh, a scenic byway along with, uh, along with Peconic Bay Boulevard. And if you think about it, you know, if, if you, make, if you uh, make a turn at Handy Pantry and you ride down to uh, the, the two and a half miles to New Suffolk Beach, it's a really beautiful ride that passes over three, three bridges. It's got, it's got views of Robbins Island. But you know that that's that scenic byway is is under assault from one end to another right now. You know we you, we have uh, the uh, Brinkman's Hardware Store at one end. We have New Suffolk Beach, which is overrun at the other end. And along the way, we have um, right right now we have large houses being put up. We have uh, the Maratuka subdivision which uh, the Peconic Land Trust and, and the neighborhoods are working to, to try and stop development there. Um, and, you know, we have on, on the uh, western end of New Suffolk Road, we have, you know, several large houses that are being built right now that are, that are going to seriously impact the view uh, that, that is part of the small town feel. And, you know, the small town feel you know, zoning affects how houses sit on property and how far away they are from each other. Um, and, uh, but it also affects how neighborhoods function. You know, if, if, you're, if you're walking around in your neighborhood and you're walking past large hedges where you can't see what's going on, uh, it doesn't really promote interactions between people. And one of the beautiful things about the North Fork is, is the way that people can walk around and talk to each other when the weather is nice and even weather, when the weather isn't nice. You know, nowhere on Long Island, if you, go, if you drive anywhere on Long Island, the 80 miles of the Long Island Expressway, people don't, people don't wave to each other when they walk by each other. It's, it's very easy to tell who isn't from out here by the fact that they don't wave when they walk by. So we're trying to preserve more than, than just uh, you know, the, the distance between houses. We're trying to preserve our neighborhoods, the social structure of, of how the people live in them and function in those neighborhoods. And large houses are seriously impact uh, the small town feel that we all love so much uh, on, on the uh, North Fork. And, you know, this is like the last chance we have to do that. Because as I said, when I started, things are happening, happening quickly. I'm sure it's happening in, on, in other places on the North Fork that I'm not aware of. Um, and we, we've really got to do something about it now. This is like our last chance before what we have out here is lost and we're just another part of the mosaic of Long Island. Long Island is an island. It can't expand outward. You know, people just move east. They don't move west. They move east. And uh, we've got to do something about it. Okay, next slide, Anne. Okay, so when is big too big? Big is too big when it does not fit in the neighborhood. Many of us have driven by a massive house that really looks out of place. Big is too big when it blocks light and views. Some of us have a neighbor whose big house has blocked the sun from our home. Some neighborhoods have lost water views because a big house is in the way. 
Big is too big when it substantially changes the small town feel of Southold. It feels now like Southold is rapidly turning into the Hamptons. Big is too big when it overtaxes natural resources. Some properties have been clear cut for big homes, which use massive amounts of water from our precious aquifer. New replacement and substantially altered homes tend to have larger footprints and are taller and often out of scale with the neighborhood. As George said, the pace of development has increased and the time to act is now. Next. Next slide, please, thank you. Most East End towns have, no, the previous one, please, Missy, go back one. No, no go back, go back two, please. Not even there you go. Thank you. Most East End towns have already limited house size. Other towns like East Hampton and South Hampton realized they needed to take action and they've limited the square footage of homes based on the lot size, no matter how large the property. You can see here on the left, South Hold's current code is the highest bar in the chart. Southold and Riverhead are the only two East End towns that do not limit house size consistent with the scale of the community and have no absolute maximum house size. This allows homes that can exceed the national average, which is the dotted line on the bottom, 2,300 square feet. Here we could have homes that exceed that by almost a hundred times. This graph shows the allowable square footage for properties up to two acres in size. Note that under our current code, a 10 acre farm could easily accommodate a house as large as the one pictured on our first slide. Next, Brianne. Brianne, you're muted. Thank you. Um, so this is the technical part of the presentation. And, um, and so, so just bear with me, there are three slides that cover our recommendation. And what we've done here is this first slide is going to show the existing code versus our recommendation, which is the one in the yellow on the right, followed by a picture of how this looks, um, and then followed by a, a table that compares South Old Town's current code with our recommendation against other East End towns so that you can see on a relative basis how this looks and um, how it looks relative to today, what exists today, and what could exist tomorrow. So on this slide here, our recommendation is um, we're going to keep lot coverage the same. We recommend keeping the setbacks the same. We're going to focus on the two main areas of, of interest, and that is house height and total square footage of the house. Again, to keep this simple, um, we, we, we reduced it to sort of the fundamental, what we think are the fundamental aspects that most people can appreciate. So house size, the first thing we were suggesting is to limit house height, and we recommend reducing a flat roof height from 35 feet to 25 feet, and changing a sloped roof from 35 feet, 35 feet of midpoint of peak to 35 feet to the peak of the house. And that may not mean anything right now, but when you see the picture on the next page, you will. Um, and we're also introducing the sky plane concept. Um, when you may have questions about that, but that's basically allowing for space and light between buildings so that uh, we, we preserve those view sheds and that, that feeling of neighborhoods. And last, we are introducing um, a concept here, um, which is about um, taking our building area, our house building area, and, and segmenting it to those lots under five acres, which is what most of South Hold Town has is under five acres and those lots over five acres. So we have a formula here, which you'll see works and it produces a graduated increase in house size so that it, it works smoothly across all dimensions of lots. And last we have an absolute maximum building area of 12,000 square feet, maximum house size. That is a very large house. It is a 
actually it's a very, very large house. So that's there um, so that you can still build a large house in South Hold Town or as, as we're recommending. Next. This is a picture of what that means. So on, so this is for a one acre lot. And what we've done is we've taken the current code and that's on the top. So you see the house in the middle is 17,000 square feet. That is roughly, again, keeping things simple, what is allowed in the current code. That house height, it, you can see where the line, the dotted line is going across. That is approximately 35 feet. This house height looks like it's about 40-ish plus feet. So <clears throat> house heights can become very large. On both sides, you see a typical house. One is 2,000 square feet, one is 1,500 square feet. That's the, the average house size. The national average is 2,300. We're just estimating these two smaller houses so you get some perspective on what you can build today, what it would look like versus what exists today in our town. If you look below that, you can see what we're proposing. We're proposing, well, it's a smaller house on a one acre lot, it's still 5,000 square feet. So it's still double, more than double the, the typical houses in the neighborhood. It also allows for that, what we call that sky plane, that pyramid, that pyramid law, which, which introduces a concept of this, this pitch, that allows for space and light between homes so that there isn't this feeling of massiveness, but there is um, uh, introduction of some, some air and space. Next. Okay, this is the, this is the, this is the big chart. <laughs> um, what you have here in, in gray is the current South Hold Town what is in yellow is the proposal. This is our recommendation. And if we just carry across on the orange bar, the one acre, on the one acre lot, which again, we're focusing on one acre because our understanding is most of South Old Town lots are between a half an acre and one acre. So it seems to be most relevant. So the current code running across allows for a 20,000 square foot home. Again, keeping things simple. Our recommendation for a one acre lot would be a 5,000 square foot home, which running across to compare it to other East End towns, it would be 6,000 square feet for Shelter Island, 5,000 for North Haven, 5,200 for Sag Harbor, 5,000 for East Hampton, 5,600 for the town of East Hampton, 5,500 for the village of Southampton, and finally for the town of Southampton, 15,000 square feet. Southampton's maximum house size is, is, is less than what the current South Old Town Code allows her today. So the point here is that you can see that it's, it's in keeping with what the other East End towns have done. Um, and it's a graduated schedule so that the house size goes up in increments by lot size. I also wanted to point out to you on the bottom, it has maximum house size slope proof. And again, we're suggesting that it be a maximum of 35 feet to the peak, to the top of the house. And this is consistent with what other East End towns have done because currently 35 feet to midpoint is actually a really, um, allows for the highest homes in all of the East End. The bottom line here is that this recommendation is in line with other East End communities and the chart demonstrates the ease of implementation and a straightforward way to preserve community character by gradually increasing house sizes until you reach the maximum of the 12,000 square feet. Next. Barbara. Okay, house size impacts. I think there is, a, is this 12? Yes, it is. Impact in other towns. I'm here on behalf of Kutchuk Civic, I'm Barbara Best. To balance out any assumptions people might have about possible negative effects house size limits might have on our communities, the civics researched what some towns experienced after they implemented these limits. This slide shows what we found. 
After East End Towns added si size limits to their code, property values actually continue to increase. Later on, some towns ended up adding more restrictions, restrictions rather than relax them. And there was no increase in the number of ZBA applications. Next. Next steps. After hearing from residents and reviewing the research, the North Fork Civics are now asking the South Hold Town Board to take these next steps. One, resolve tonight to take action to adopt code changes to limit house size. Two, convene a code committee meeting to review and refine proposals and recommend final code revisions for the town board to adopt by September 2021. We'll follow up with a written proposal to the town board for consideration by the code committee. Next and over to George. George, you're muted. Okay, I unmute. Am I unmuted now? Yes. Yeah. We want to thank the town board for hosting this meeting. Um, we uh, we we emphatically want to say just one more time that. Things are changing quickly and we need the help of the town board to preserve our communities. And we're counting on, we're counting on you to, to make an impact on our future. So thank you for having our presentation and we look forward to your comments and, and the community's comments. Next, over. Presentation. Yep. Our presentation's over. Okay. I'm going to invite anybody from the public that would like to ask any questions to please uh, use the raise hand function. First up. Eric, you're permitted to talk. Go ahead. Thanks. No, I just wanted to say, I mean, I'm a builder. I have a career in real estate development, zoning, land use. I serve on the town zoning board of appeals. And I think this presentation is dead on. I think it's be a great amendment to the zoning code of the way it's written. And my experience in Southampton is when they did their zoning changes, I mean, it didn't affect my business at all. And I don't think it affected the realtors, didn't affect the developers as far as their ability to be able to return their investment. And I think it helped their community character remain somewhat stable. And I think we'll need the same zoning changes moving forward if we wanna try to maintain our own community character in this town while allowing people to live and still be able to make a living in real estate. And uh, I think this is a great job. Thanks. Also would like to ask question or make statements, comments. Next up we have Linda. Linda, hi Linda. Hi, uh, yes, Linda Oriema from New Suffolk. Uh, I want to echo that this presentation was amazing, uh, right on and clear, concise, and it it tells the story where we're at right now. Um, I just wanted to ask someone in the committee if they could please go over. There was a slide earlier in the presentation that gave a potential house sizes in New Suffolk, uh, not New Suffolk, in South Hold, if going with the twenty percent lot coverage. Um, how big a house can be built on a half an acre, a full acre. Could you please go over that? Because um, I believe Cork Mall was speaking, but it wasn't addressed uh, fully. And I think it's important to 
make sure everybody understands that. Thank you. I think that was six, slide six. We could also look at the um, table. So why don't we go to slide six? It's very visual. Missy, could you bring up slide six? It says current South Hold code allows very big houses. Barbara, while we're waiting for the slide, Barbara, would you like to speak to? Yeah. Barbara, would you like to speak to this slide a, a little bit? Um, you could also go to uh, page page 11, which breaks it down even further. And that's Friedman, right? Yes, Barbara Friedman. Um, well, this, this slide is showing the size of a, that you can build on, on various um, size properties, starting with two acres at the top. And what it's based on is a 20% footprint um, times two and a half stories. Um, that, that means that you, you would be devoting your entire allowable lot coverage to a house, which is a little bit unrealistic, but um, it's in here for, for effect. Um, but you can, you can build a very large house based on the current code. Um, does that answer the question? Linda, is that, is that clear? Yeah. Scott, this presentation will also be, a, is also available on the town website so people could refer to it. Yeah, we'll make sure. Okay. Laura, Linda, Linda, did that answer your question? Sorry, it didn't ask me to unmute. I just wanted to make sure it was pointed out, for instance, that on a one half acre of property, which is at the bottom of that slide, uh, a 10,000 square foot house can be built. I, I don't know if people, you know, caught the the enormity of, of what we're talking about here. That's a tiny lot. It's typical of South Hold Town. And I mean, think about a, a 10,000 square foot house. You know, how, how big is the house you're living in? Is it 2,000 square feet? I mean, it's huge. And I think people really need to be aware of this. Thank you. Who else would like to comment? Next we have. Donna? Donna, you're Shaper? I'm Shaper. Donna, you have permission to speak. Oh, thank you. I just wanted to say um, how um, I put it in the question, so I didn't think I'd get to speak. I'm really um, interested in this question uh, because it's so biblical in proportion and it really moves us into places where we have to deal with questions of proportion and balance. How much growth is good? What is the worth of the individual? It's a very philosophical conversation and I'm glad we're doing it practically. Um, but there's nowhere in the Bible that it says that some people should have really big houses and other people should have none. That's all I had to say. Who else would like to uh, ask a question or make any comments? Joan Serrato, you have permission to speak. You're okay, Joan. Joan? Yes. Uh, can we see we some that, that has affected the North Fork? So far, what I see is the South Fork, but what's happening here on the North Fork in terms of the size of houses on little lots and dwarfing smaller houses? Well, 
I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question. Okay. I would like to see, and I think everybody should see, we're talking about the North Fork right now, not the South Fork. We're showing the South Fork and what happened there, but we're using the North Fork and we want to protect the North Fork. Can you show me pictures where this, the houses have really, you know, gone beyond the size of the land and have dwarfed the smaller houses and killed the community? And um, would the seven groups let me answer that just for a second? Sure. Um, actually, the, the group came before the town board um, to make a, a presentation during a work session. At the time, there were some homes that were featured in there, uh, images of homes that exist in the community. Um, I had actually made the decision when I talked to them at the time and asked them to please pull those out. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to move forward with uh, some concepts and some ideas. And I didn't want to basically hold specific homes or owners up as examples of what we don't want. I didn't think that was fair. Uh, perhaps in the future, we could take and look at some homes and create maybe a silhouette, uh, along with a silhouette of other homes to get a concept of, uh, this, of the volume of the homes. But I just didn't think it was appropriate to take the homes of town residents or, and say, here, this is what we don't want in this community. I just didn't think that was fair. So. They, they left it out of this presentation, and I appreciate but that. But uh, isn't that, the whole that. presentation about what is fair and what we want? So what, we're here now on the North Fork. Why aren't we showing it? Why aren't we showing what's not right? I think they did that with the artist renderings. When? Uh, early in the presentation. I don't, I don't know if everybody else saw it, but you know, I, I tuned in at 630. I didn't see anything. So, Joan, I think, I think what, um, since we're not showing actual photographs of houses, I think each one of us in every hamlet can speak to the size of homes that are going up. Um, because we can't show them here tonight, um, I wonder if um, uh, Barbara Best could speak to Kachog for a moment in some of the houses. I mean, what's behind you, Barbara? is um, actually not North Fork, but it's very close to what is happening near you. Is that correct? You'll have to move aside well, so people can see what's behind Oh, you. yeah, this is not from, <laughs> yeah, again, I'm not violating the, um, because I have some really nice neighbors, one who has a very big home. And, um, you know, I also don't want to point fingers and shame my neighbors. But, um, you know, we were devastated um, when the large homes started going in here. And we want to kind of stop this from growing any further. And I even think some of the large homes in our neighborhood would be okay under, under this uh, proposal. But still the feeling is there, the hometown feeling. And it's, um, it, was, it, was it was devastating. George, maybe you could speak to Nusafik. Yeah, I mean, it's anybody who rides around can can see a view that they used to see that now has the, you know, the silhouette of a large home in it. And, you know, change change is inevitable and we're going to have change. And I think it's important to to note and realize that that what we're talking about here is not people being jealous of people having larger homes. What we're talking about is just the way that neighborhoods look and the way that we would like to have a future where the North Fork looks different from a place like Manhasset or Huntington or uh, or someplace where we haven't people didn't uh, people didn't uh, take action soon enough and what we have now in those places is really not the not the kind of beauty that we're used to having here thank you All right. Who else would like to comment or ask any questions? Next, I have Bob DeLuca. Hey, Bob. Uh, good evening, Mr. Supervisor and uh, members of the, of the uh, town board. Uh, Bob DeLuca, East Marion and Group for the East End. I just want to uh, thank the civics uh, for their presentation this evening, which I thought was terrific. I thought the graphics were really helpful in uh, 
in understanding the issue and for the town boards, you know, entertaining this discussion. And just a couple of, of uh, comments. One, I can tell you in my subdivision in East Marion, um, responding to the prior speaker's question, I would say that the new homes that have come into this subdivision since my home, um, since I moved into this house about 20 years ago, are about two to two and a half times the size of what was being built. So the 2000 square foot home, and this is a, a little anecdotal, but I think I'd be close, is about a 4,500 to 5,000 square foot home. And these are very small, narrow lots. And they really do. And if someone wanted pictures of them, you could show them. Um, they really do change the face of the neighborhood and you can't miss them. And again, it's not a comment on the people who live in them. It's a comment on how the neighborhood turns out over time. And the second thing is the South Fork really is instructive. I actually, the first picture you showed there of the Renner compound, I had the, uh, the dubious distinction of working um, on that project many years ago alongside community members who were in Sagaponic does not exactly, you know, have a bunch of tiny homes, but uh, who were shocked that that could happen on us on, on one piece of property. And the problem that the town faced, and I think one of the reasons Southampton even has the 15,000 square foot limit today is they really were caught off guard and back on their heels. And because they weren't able to take affirmative action and set the bar before this happened, they were playing catch up afterwards. So to the extent that the town board can move on this idea and obviously many others, in the comp plan, um, you're sparing yourselves and the community some really kind of nasty struggles uh, from a land use perspective down the line. And I just uh, wanted to, to share that because the Rennert project was probably three to five years and multiple lawsuits, everybody suing everybody else. Um, it was a mess. And I don't think anybody felt um, that that's really what should have happened there, but the town simply didn't have um, the rules to prevent it. And so, that seems to happen out here. Anyway, I'll, I'll leave it there, but thank you again uh, to the Civics Great presentation and thanks to the town board for uh, uh, facilitating this discussion. Thanks, Bob. All right. Next is Cordelia James. Okay, hello. Thank you guys so much for having me. My name is Cordelia James. I'm a reporter at The Real Deal. Um, so, I just wanted to know, like one, it sounds like everyone here is just so passionate about this. And so I was curious, how long have you guys been pushing for these changes to the house heights and what kind of criticism have you guys encountered or what kind of criticism do you expect to encounter when trying to make these changes? Um, Cordelia, I can tell you that in East Marion, um, we did a community uh, survey about five years ago and uh, the, the results were that house size was a very big issue for us. And we actually uh, went to the planning board with a proposal to, um, to ask them to review house sizes and possibly limit them in some way about four years ago. Um, and this issue has been uh, pretty active in Orient as well and the other hamlets. And we all came together about four years ago. And this was one of the main issues that we all agreed on. And we've been working on it pretty steadily for I'd say the past year. And just to just to echo that, uh, the Orient Association took a survey in at least six years ago um, and over 80% of respondents um, said that house size was one of the main issues facing the Hamlet. So it's, it, but it, it, it takes time to, to, to work together and to come together. And we've all come together, as Anna said, um, and sharing our, our sh these are our shared concerns about house size. I, I can't say that we've heard any negative feedback about limiting house size. We haven't, we haven't gotten, received any negative feedback. John Denise Carter, Marion. John Carter, Manitoc Laurel, no. Barbara Kachog, George, East New Suffolk. Yeah, there was a comment. Um, there was a lot of positive um, reaction to the proposal. There was one comment about there was a, there was existing codes on the books, but that's all I've heard. Okay, thank you guys um, so much. Uh, I know, of course, I'm a journalist, so I have like a million questions, but I don't want to monopolize all the time here. Is it okay if I were to give you guys my contact information just to reach out after this meeting? 
Yes. Okay, I'll yeah, draw. They all, they all have websites. Yeah, they all have websites. Uh, I, I don't want to speak for the civics, but I suppose that she can ask questions through your website. Yeah, absolutely. You can Thank contact us through our websites. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Would like to speak next, Thomas. Oh, hi! Thank you so much. This is Thomas Benna. Um, I'm the director of One Big Home, and was asked to maybe make a comment this evening. And I think my comment is just I'm so thrilled to see how well you're all working together, and that you've had no negative feedback on your proposals. I, I mean, that wasn't my experience on Martha's Vineyard, but what has been my experience: the bylaw passed in 2013. Nobody has tried to sue the town. Uh, the builders and the architects are completely used to working with the bylaw now. And there's a sense in our town that we dodged a bullet. And as you know, since COVID, these small hamlets are under extreme pressure and the vineyard demographic has almost changed overnight. And we feel a relief that we have something in place in a proactive sense. So I commend you all and I, I thank you for your efforts. Thank you. Who else would like to speak? Meryl. Hi, uh, my name is Meryl Kramer. I'm an architect. Um, I live in Mattituck and my office and my business is in Southhold. Um, and I wanted to thank the board for um, holding this meeting and for the excellent, excellent presentation put together by the committee of um, the civic associations. And um, I am in full support of uh, limiting house size and modifying the existing code. Um, I say to my clients often, just because you can, doesn't mean you should do something that is allowed by code. Um, there's a kind of an unwritten code um, in architecture. Um, I find that when you design something, it should fit uh, scale, proportion, um, it should have relationships to structures around it. And um, oftentimes, um, if we have a building code to support um, this philosophy, then it will be a lot easier to prevent people from um, insisting on doing larger, uh, larger structures. Um, and uh, I also have to say, um, ooh, I forgot, so I'm going to sign off, but um, kudos to everybody and really beautiful presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Who would like to speak next? Alex Hammer. Alex Hammer? Alex Hammer. Alec, you have permission to speak. Hello. Hi, my name is Alec Hamer and I um, am in New Suffolk. And I just wanted to um, thank the civics and the town for having this discussion. I think it's a very important discussion and uh, to echo what Bob was saying earlier, that I think that, um, yeah, um, Southampton was really caught um, uh, unaware when the Rennert House went in. And this is simply just like a good safeguard to have, good guardrails to have. I mean, frankly, I would, I would like to see the proposals being even a little more restricted. They seem quite generous now. So um, I hope that the, uh, that the town uh, goes for it and uh, approves these uh, measures. And to address what Joan was asking earlier, I can tell you a house uh, that I um, think is just out of character and overwhelms the house next door. And that's on um, First Street, New Suffolk, where next to the, you know, the cute little sugar shack, which is a tiny house or small house, there's a really large house next door, which is a big white box. And it just seems way too large for the lot. So anyway, that's just that. So thank you. And um, I hope uh, you go for it, town. Yep. 
And next we have. Yes, Venetia Hands, High Town and, and Committees. Um, I'm Venetia Hands. I live in Orient and I've been very active with the Orient Association on this very issue before us now for a number of years. I want to thank, thank all of you. I'm glad you've come to Gamma Civics. I think this is a great presentation. Um, and, and, I, and I love the recommendations. I, I would like them to be more restrained, but I think getting something through with a max size of 12,000 would be a huge benefit if that's what it is, plus the other things. Um, I, I, I want to thank Scott for not letting you show actual houses on the North Fork. It's terribly tempting. <laughs> I keep wanting to. Um, but I think it brings personalities into what ideally should be more a, a, a conversation of principles and things like that. And um, right now we have a lot uh, more and more houses that are of the four to 5,000 square feet size, they're big. And we have a few that are up at the 11,000 square foot size. And Joe and I will happily take you to see some of them. Um, we aren't getting these 16,000, 20,000 and so on and so forth. And some people have said, why bother to do anything if it's not happening? That's what happened to Southampton. Um, Scott, you, S Supervisor Russell, you and your board were wonderfully preemptive about Plum Island, which is another place we want to preserve. And you passed zoning laws that would prevent that island being bought by private developers and things like that. And those zoning laws will come into play in the future if and when the island is sold to somebody and anybody buying it knows they're there. And I think we're asking you to take that kind of action again here to be preemptive. And I know there are people who um, don't like to be told what they can and cannot do on their land. I'm, I'm not opposed to that at all. I'm a bit like that myself when it comes to me. Um, but we're balancing individual rights with the good of the community um, and the health of the community and the public good. And um, I think that it is truly time to take action now. I think this September um, timeframe is terrific. And I would hate to see us keep talking, talking, talking as another and another and another house pops up in a place where it probably shouldn't be. Um, blocking the view, overwhelming somebody. And um, so I urge you to go ahead and form, to, to adopt the resolution and to form the code committee. Thank you very much board. Thank you. I also would like to call oh, Mary Ellen. Yes, hello, how are you today? Thank you for letting me speak. I'd like to thank you for perfectly illustrating your point and for giving the town board concrete data to use in implementing preservation of the culture of our town. We'll all benefit from your efforts as the board heroically adopts your recommendations. And so I'm looking forward to September 2021 when this has happened. So thank you so much because you have put yourselves out in a big way and you've worked very hard and it's obvious and you're a benefit to the whole community with your actions. Thank you. Thank you. Who else would like to come? Thank you. Hello there. Uh, some people say it's all about the Benjamins. I say it's not all about the Benjamins. Uh, but uh, speaking, I, I agree with everything that we've seen so far, but I also would like to take this uh, 
these things further. Uh, as far as the history of South Hold Town, land preservation has been a, a major effort by the community in purchasing the development rights on farmlands. Well, the, the current uh, proposal, I think, is to do a similar thing, limiting the development rights on uh, residential lands. However, by doing it by regulations rather than purchase of the development rights. And I, for one, would not want to see the town try to purchase all the development rights from each individual uh, property owner. And I don't think it would be appropriate. I think that a, a property owner who cares about their property should, well, I'll, I'll save that for the end, but, um, One example of some houses which I feel are too large were uh, houses which were built against the wishes of the town. The property owners sued the town and secured the rights to build those houses behind the town beach. And I, I think they kind of stick out because they are adjacent to the town beach. But getting back to the Benjamins, this uh, proposal, I think that one of the aspects that hasn't been discussed and brought out yet is that by limiting the house size, I think we are supporting the economy of the community, not just individual property owners who have the money already uh, and want to do whatever they want to do, but protecting our community so that local people can find affordable residences uh, even if they can't afford a 20,000 square foot house. Um, well, I, again, I, I want to thank the, uh, the committee for a wonderful job and I support the proposal as is. However, I think there's another way to another perspective, which is worth looking at that not uh, not only are we would we be this law, these regulations be limiting the house size, but it would also be protecting the yard size. And uh, I think we should uh, be cognizant of the movement that started recently, not too long ago, by Douglas Tallamy's book, Bringing Nature Home. And his more recent book published last year, which kind of got uh, pushed aside by the COVID uh, pandemic, but Nature's Best Hope. We need to support property owners who uh, want to live in the country and want to live in houses with yards, not just houses. Finally, uh, what came to my mind as I was listening to this presentations is that property lines are not poor, are porous. Property lines are porous. Property lines are not, one property is not separated from the property next to it. And all of the properties in a community do affect each other. So by accepting limits, which we do all the time, we have all kinds of regulations especially those of us who live on waterfront properties to protect the, uh, the community. And I, I support these, this um, proposal as is, and I, I hope that it can be strengthened and enforced and not, not in any way weakened. Thank you. Hi, first, I'd like to say that you all did a fabulous job and the town board should listen and act as quickly as possible. Um, kudos to all of you. Um, I worked with the village of Southampton um, to introduce limitations on their house size and we had the data so we could really go into depth. and. One of the criticisms that was raised that had to be addressed was the issue of 
increasing nonconformance. And I have to say in the village of Southampton, which already had large homes, it was less than 1%. So it was negligible. So it is a non-issue. And traditionally people did not build to the maximum allowed. They built to what they needed. So it is not an issue that you need to think about here. And I'm sure it will be raised. I've already heard it. Um, the other thing is in the village of Southampton, they basically gave up on their native community. They lost their community and they recognized it. They still wanted to introduce limitations, but they lost the people that were connected to the earth. And we still have community here. And it is extremely important that we protect that. If we, um, what's happening is there's an intensification of use. And it invites people to look at individual parcels as investments to pull as much as they can out of it rather than a place they want to be. And that's not true of course of everybody, but there has been a major shift in attitude um, to property ownership here. And we need to protect that sense of community before we don't have a community and we all have to move elsewhere. And finally, this intensification can destroy the natural environment that we so cherish and the reason that we came here. And the town board really needs to look at intensification of use, whether it's an increase in building size or other things. So I think this is a fabulous first step and please act quickly. Thank you. We have next, Teresa. Uh, good evening, Teresa McCaskey, Matata. Um, I wanted to say thank you very much to the civic associations for, for this presentation, um, for putting this presentation together. It was really very impressive. Um, and I hope that our town board supports all the proposed building code changes. Um, I also just wanted to uh, mention, you know, um, it's, we're talking about a lot of construction here. Uh, building and all, but um, one of the committee members touched on one point, and I want to kind of echo it. It's that if, if something is a so excessively large, so excessively largely built on a piece of property, it will cause a strain on our natural resources. You know, um, with the house, then comes a the pool, and the pool house, etc., and so forth, and the sprinkler system, and the lawn. I mean, we sit on our a, a sole source aquifer. So I just would like everyone to please remember that we're talking about building and all, but we'd also need to respect nature as well. So I hope the town board um, takes all this information that was perfectly and beautifully put together and will take action on this. So thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. And again, thank you uh, civic associations for all this um, hard work. Great job, thank you. Thank you. Louise. Louise Harrison, thank, there you go. Thank you, thank you, so I'm here. Uh, Louise Harrison, I, I work for Save the Sound, but I'm speaking on my own uh, behalf tonight. Um, I live in Peconic. I'm one of those people who moved here not too long ago. I moved here uh, between 10 and 11 years ago. I'm one of the people who moved east. And I came for exactly all the things you're trying to preserve. And I, first of all, I, I want to say to the town board and to the supervisor, thank you for hosting this. Uh, this was fabulous. I want to say to the civics and those of you on the committee, um, fabulous job. Um, your graphics are excellent. They're excellent. I learned a lot. And um, I, I just think they're, they're perfect for getting the message across in a few slides and I can't give them any higher marks. Um, living here uh, is a daily treat, but when I get in my car, sometimes I get sad when I see the changes. I know you all do too. 
and that's what we're talking about. I also um, am very disturbed by the amount of forest coming down in South Old Town because we have so little of it to begin with. Um, so I echo the remarks made earlier about the effect of, of large homes on, on our natural resources, not just water, but our other natural resources as well. But when it comes to sense of community, it's here tonight. It's not just houses, folks, it's you guys. I mean, look at what you have done together. This is why I love living in South Hold. The people here who take their free time and put their heads together and decide, you know, we're gonna put on a show. <laughs> I say that in jest, but I mean, look at the hard work you've done, the research you've done, the intelligence you've put behind this. You're the kind of people I want to live among. Thank you for creating this community and this community feeling. And um, if we can add some architectural relevance to it all, how perfect uh, it will be, Shangri-La. Yeah. Who's next? No one else has their hand raised. Uh, yeah, if anybody would like to uh, speak, I just want to remind you to uh, hit the raise uh, hand function. No one. Oh, I see some pumping up there, but I, I know nothing about down. Zoom, so. No, she keeps going up and down. Sue. Nope. There, there are also quite a few Sorry. comments in the question and answer um, function. I'm not sure they're questions, but a lot of comments. The biblical one was answered by the woman that originally called the first talker. Yeah, we're going to take questions to the raised hand function. The Q and A function would become. Um, I think been through that before. Become unmanageable. No, it's not real questions. Most of just comments. It's just comments. It's not questions in there. It's just comments. Okay. And the chat is a thank you from Barbara Best. Okay. okay. I just want to uh, outline. I went through the presentations, and I just uh, again, uh, as I know, you asked us to call for action, but I explained earlier why. Uh, in tonight's setting, it has to be more presentation rather than the board acting on any town business. Uh, just a couple of questions that had come to mind uh, as I was listening was first, uh, if the town board would have to consider whether this would be a new schedule that applies to um, all homes or schedule for new construction. Also, the potential uh, on the proposed changes well, will it produce the results that we want. Um, still allow for homes out of scale with the area and the possibility of creating uh, more non-conformity for the smaller homes. I'm sorry, for the homes on the smaller lots, things we have to consider. Um, but so the, I hear a gross floor area a lot. I just, I need to have a definition on that because, um, you know, I, if we're talking about garages and all those other things, in a lot of instances I've seen, not just um, more recently, but as an assessor is that the garages, the two car garages, really add to the volume of the, the perceptual, or the, 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 the visual volume of the structure. And we have to talk about the decks and the porches and things, which obviously uh, uh, lend to that, uh, which is also brings me to the uh, point of the vaulted ceilings. Uh, a lot of instances when you see these large homes of a large volume, but when the interior is broken up and a lot of that is vaulted uh, or cathedral ceiling, you know, the, the square footage of the living area then tends to, is much less than what would be perceived. And if the issue is volume, then we, that's an issue we have to resolve. But so the Pyramid Lawrence Alliance, I, I like it. I just want to make sure something like that wouldn't create um, people a building out larger one story and meet the 45 degree angle. I to peak measurement, we really have to consider what's going to be the measurement base. Is it going to be the existing grade? Or um, so we have to be careful uh, that we don't create some sort of house on a hill trend where people elevate the center of their lot to get the elevation of the home. Um, 
you know, so, uh, and then bring in film and things like that. So those are the types of things. Um, but so one other thing that we haven't really talked about, and that's uh, existing community character. There are some communities out here, historic areas, things like that, that already have very large homes on smaller lots that actually in many instances probably are out of compliance with the code as it's drafted, um, certain aspects of it. Um, and if we went to a, a new scale or a reduced scale, would that have an inverse effect on community character in those instances and how, how the town board can resolve it? I'm not, I'm not offering any of this in an opposition. I'm just saying these are all the things that a town board would have to consider uh, to make sure that uh, construction that takes place is consistent with community character. And in some instances, community character is larger homes. Um, and then I like uh, Ann's uh, explanation for what, what is, uh, when it's big, too big. I was going to sort of paraphrase a former Supreme Court justice who said, uh, maybe it's hard to define, but we know it when we see it. Um, right. And then obviously, you know, impacts on the older homes, um, the smaller area homes that certainly have a right to evolve and be one year, uh, year round. But um, obviously, I, I have to be honest, I think your presentation was much more. Um, I don't want to say generous, that's not the, more permissive than what I had it originally anticipated um, a year ago. So I think that would probably resolve some of those questions I have. One of the questions that I have um, uh, was where uh, some of the numbers came from. H how did we arrive at some of the minimums and maximums that we'd like to see? Barbara and Barbara, would you like to talk a little bit just about the process? Because um, so Bob, we did iterate through this recommendation a few times. Uh, we did get feedback. We shared it with a couple of others who are in planning departments and building departments in other towns. And we we modified it based on that feedback. So Barbara, maybe you could start with just sort of where we started and where we ended up. Well, um, we started with something basically very similar to, to Sag Harbor's formula. I mean, we didn't want to totally reinvent the wheel. You know, there's zoning codes up and down the East Coast um, that, that we looked at, um, but um, it seemed like, um, you know, we were looking for reasonable numbers um, and you know, I agree that they, they could have been uh, even more restrictive, but we didn't, um, we wanted to stay within the range of other East End towns, I guess. So we, we looked at a, a, a formula similar to Sag Harbors, and then we tried to simplify it um, and, and still get kind of the numbers to be, um, what seemed appropriate based on what the other towns um, had. Thank you. I'll, I'll just uh, jump in real quick and just say, you know, I, I just like everyone, I appreciate the work that you put into this the presentation was great. It was very clear. I appreciate that you came to us with, with an idea um, at least a point for us to start a discussion and, and have some real figures um, and numbers to look at. So, you know, I really appreciate all of the work that you did. Um, it was great. Thank you so much for stepping up and, and for making this, uh, you know, available for the public to see as well. Appreciate it. I will say that as the uh, process moves along and as we, uh, as we uh, address the uh, recommendations, be it in the code committee or at the town board. Um, I will be interested to see how, uh, how much uh, support we find, uh, if there's gonna be, if there is any um, a pushback at all, um, because I know that it has been somewhat controversial in, in other communities. Um, I know that one of the things that makes Southhold special is the idea um, and the uh, processes that we've used over the last 20 to 30 years to try to preserve what it is that we have here. Uh, and it's very important. It's important to those of us who live here that we uh, maintain our uh, uh, community character. 
uh, it'll be so it'll be really interesting to see as we move along if there are outside uh, groups or outside uh, individuals that come in to fight uh, to fight against it and to see what they have to say. You know, one of the reasons I had asked the question and where we came up with the numbers is I want to make sure that you know we are we we can defend defend our position, and uh, I think that that'll be a critical part of what it is that we try to do. Unless by some miracle there's absolutely no opposition, then it's you know then it's a different story. But uh, uh, I do look forward to uh, to seeing where this goes and and uh, and having further discussions. Uh, and I too, uh, and, uh, and you know, appreciate all the time and the effort that you put into to putting this together. It's uh, it was well thought out and and well structured. And I appreciate that. Uh, Bob, maybe I'm misunderstood, but did you just volunteer to present it to the Long Island Builders Association? Yeah, you know, it, it, it's funny you said that because that was exactly who I was thinking of. Uh, <laughs> and you know, I I do have to tread somewhat lightly. I mean, let's face it. Uh, I, I mean, in all candor, uh, a good chunk of my uh, of my living uh, it involves uh, working in those uh, big homes on the South Fork. So, um, you know. I will be walking a fine line, I'm sure. Anybody, else? Anybody from the public raise their hand again? There, there's someone raising their hand. Cordelia James raised her hand in the attendees. Okay, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, so just, I guess, another question I had was just like, so what are the next steps here? When might we find out how this is progressing, um, whether or not we might actually see these amendments by September of this year, as well as I just wanted to clarify again, where some of the figures came with those national height averages, because I know there was like a slide where we saw some of that data, and I just want to make sure I'm attributing that to the right place. I'm, I'll, I'll address the issue in terms of next steps. Um, again, the town board can't make any commitments tonight as to whether they're going to, when they're going to create a code committee uh, or call for a code committee, when there's going to be anticipated adoption. Those are all part of a uh, the regular well, course of doing business for the town. We can't do that tonight because there's no public uh, access to the building. But I would say that um, I would anticipate we'll have it on the agenda for uh, the next available work session. I, I don't know what the next agenda looks like. Um, I know we had quite a bit coming in, but we'll certainly try to get this on it. Can I answer the question about the the cent the uh, the yeah. home size? That's a it's U.S. Census data on new homes built in 2019. It's not it's not a U.S. average home size, but it's new homes. Um, that was the latest data they had on, on new homes. Okay, thank you so much. There was a question um, in the question and answer about um, a concern that allowable square footage not allow for elevated houses. Um, and I, I think that was somewhat addressed, but I'm not sure, can someone speak to that? Well, I, I think that uh, just just a, a point of information, and I don't know the exact way it's written, but I do believe that uh, uh, either Southampton or East Hampton, uh, their pyramid law is structured so that it takes into account floodplain, and it measures from the floodplain. So, if they build, if a house is being built and say it's got a ten foot uh, uh, flood line, uh, they would uh, take the the uh, uh, the pyramid from that point. Um, uh, the, the, yeah, I was going to ask about FEMA, um, how you factor the FEMA into the equation, FEMA elevation. They take the 45 degrees beyond the FEMA point or at the, uh, at the natural grade below the FEMA compliance uh, foundation. I believe it's from, uh, from the point uh, that the FEMA line is at, and then they'll draw the 45 from there. Um, I could okay. be wrong, but I think that that's what they do. I do know that it gets taken into consideration.
Anybody, any other questions by, by the public? Comments by the panel or the town board? Oh, Sanja has his hand up. Jen, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Uh, I emailed the town clerk and she responded and said, this is not a town board meeting. It's not a regular town board meeting. It's not a special town board meeting. I agree, it's not a regular town board meeting, but I do believe it is a special town board meeting. And I think that even though you're not making any decisions and taking any action, so to speak, the public still have the right to listen to the deliberations and decisions that go into making public policy. And I think you're certainly doing that tonight. And I would ask if the town board could, uh, I don't, you know, I don't want to say you should take a vote tonight because you're not taking action, but what you're doing is in my mind, something that is the equivalent and should be known, and I believe the recording should be posted on the IQ2M, I2QM, whatever, the town board meeting uh, website. Does anybody agree or disagree? Oh, the IQM2 would be um, recorded through the uh, Allen video, who is not here tonight. So I would imagine this recording of the Zoom meeting would be available on the website. Mm -hmm. Well, will this be submitted to, I think this can be posted on the IQM2. You can submit recordings and videos and put it up there. I will find out. I'll find out. Okay, I think you have a quorum of town board members and uh, the subject of the discussion is important and should be available. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else from the public or board or civic association? I just want to uh, echo what everybody else has said. Um, thank you, the civics, for really you know coming together and putting all this work uh, through you. A part of the reason why it takes the town board to um, go over and get code done, and part of the reason it takes so long is because we have to do all this back research and uh, you've done a lot of our work for us. So uh, you gave, an, like Sarah said, you gave us a, a good head start. So thank you. Anybody else like to make any comment? No? All right, I'm just going to yeah, echo what Jill and the others have said. I want to thank all of you so much for all the work you've done. And also, to be candid, I, I, you know, I've been doing this a long time. That's no secret. And you've always been a pleasure to deal with every civic association. So I want to thank you for that. Bye. I'm just going to say thank you very much and good night. And likewise, I'm going to say thank you, and we look forward thank you. to working with you uh, on this further. Yeah. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Have a good night, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Good night. Good night. Thank you.